New World by Ivan X. And um, just, um, it's hard to get this. There's no rewind on uh, sound. I know. Track. Yeah, and it has a cold <laughs> open. So, uh, you know sorry. what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reload this page. That'll do it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, if anybody's having trouble hearing this, let me know right away. But otherwise, I'm just going to play it from beginning to end. And let's all uh, give our attention to Ivan X. Here we go. Nice job. Nice track. Oh, sorry. I meant to pause that. Um, nice track, Ivan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great job. Um, very uh, nice production. I mean, it really has that feeling of like, um, I don't know, I can, I can hear, I feel like it fits in well with the kind of references that I would think of for this, some sort of like, um, you know, all, all kinds of great stuff. Um, I mean, anything from 
almost to like ministry, but also like all kinds of um, some dark wave and some earlier uh, reference points. Um, That's where I come from. What can I yeah. say? <laughs> yeah. Maybe my bloody Valentine. Um, so anyway, great job. I, um, uh, let's see. I, the, the mix sounds great. And I like the like density of the effects that you have going on. You know, there's a, there's a lot of delays and reverbs that are being used in a really way that really fits the, the genre. I think I'm hearing somebody's uh, audio. If you guys could mute yourselves. Yeah. Or our headphones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Great. Yeah, if you're not talking, maybe keep it muted. And there is a set there is a great setting. I don't know if I have it on right now. Um, there's a handy setting where you can unmute by holding the space bar. So I do that sometimes where it just it's like kind of a safety mute, but if I want to say something, I can just quickly get in there. Yeah, I think that's on by default. Um, oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fantastic uh, production-wise in terms Thank of- Thank you, nice to um, hear. The, swir the swirliness of it, you know, which I think fits the style of music a lot. Um, and I was curious, are those program drums that you made in, in Logic? Yeah, that's 100% stock Logic stuff. Yeah, and you program the drums in yourself? Yeah, yeah, basically uh -huh. by- because I'm not even with any of my stuff. I sometimes use uh, MIDI pads and play it in because I'm a drummer. Um, but I, I was actually like, I, I drew the notes on the grid, yeah. Well, you know, I was going to say that like the, the way the drum part is played is so idiomatic that it seemed pretty clear that you either were a drummer or you had a real gift for <laughs> drums because, you know, it was played in the way a drummer would play it, you know? Um, cool, that's and, excellent. Yeah, it, sound, it sounded very natural. Good. And, you know, the, as I'm sure you can tell, I mean, sure, as you've already experienced, the Logic drum sounds are so good that, you know, if you, um, if you told me that you had recorded that on real drums, I would say, wow, you had a great studio, but, it, but I, could be, I could be fooled, you know, because uh, the, that's, and that's one of, the, like, one of the things I like Logic for depending on the genre of music, but a lot of times if I'm, sometimes I'm programming real drum machine-y drums, but other times I'm right. I do too sometimes. a real drummer. Yeah. yeah. And in that case, the stuff that's built into Logic is like fantastic. Did you all, um, did you all feel the same way, like appreciative of the, of the quality of the drumming? Cause I thought that was really nice, like nice toms and stuff. Maybe I'll play a little sample of that. Um, let's just listen for a moment. job with that um i guess the one thing if you had played it in yourself now if, if i'm gonna get like microscopic yeah get microscopic yeah if you had played it in yourself i bet you would have done more velocity variations on the hi-hat and stuff uh, yes i probably would have <laughs> yeah. yes um, absolutely but honestly that's only when i'm sitting here trying to microscopically right. listen to whether it's programmed or not um so anyway but i can tell that when you program those in you were using some vari uh, varieties of velocity. Yes, right. I, I and, did. Yeah, and so well, both, both intentionally, and then I also actually used the MIDI humanize function on a couple of the uh, parts as well. Oh, ah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, is anybody else in here familiar with Logic or uses uses Logic as to record? <laughs> That's an Ableton crowd. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Well, so 
one thing I'll just mention about logic. Well, any, anytime you're programming drums, I really recommend that people pay attention to the um, pay attention to velocity, which is of course the it's like sort of the volume of what what each drum hit is at, right? In terms of um, it's slightly different than volume because it's not only loudness, but it actually makes the drums sound like they're being played harder or softer, right? And so by doing that, you can get a really realistic drum sound or a really much more of a groove so that, um, you know, so that your hi-hat, instead of sounding like maybe it'll sound like that sort of thing that can subtly give more of a groove. So anyway, did a great job with that. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then my, let's see. And then as far as like a constructive critique, the only thing that I really thought of was that I feel like the, the voice can use a little more love. Uh, maybe in particular, I felt like sort of in the air range, like the higher frequency mm -hmm. range of the vocals could use a little more air and brightness. Like they were- okay felt a little closed off to me. Um, and, you know, depending on what you're going for, I'd also consider maybe doing more vocal processing of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, usually I do this one. I don't know whether it was the right decision, but it was an intentional decision to leave it a little more naked, you mm -hmm. know, because um, I thought that went with the song. But usually I, I do try to do a little more vocal processing just impartially because I don't think I'm the strongest vocalist. So, right, right. Uh, you know. Well, you know, a little of those things can be, can be nice. I, I use that too if I'm ever forced mm -hmm. to sing. Um, I, I do this and that. You know, for instance, uh, obviously just doubling. Right. Just by, by re singing it. Right. Is a great right. way. Um, and when I do that, I really try to, or whatever artist I'm working with, if I have them double a vocal. I have them try to sing it very, very tightly to right. the original. You know, um, I don't like to just, you know, you could just take an alternate take and put it there and they sort of match up. But if I want to get a really nice double, a lot of times I have them get in there and, really? you know, listen to the next phrase, listen to exactly how you sang it and then sing it and do it like that. So that might be a nice thing or some, you know, million other ways to do it. But yeah. I thought maybe some, processing and uh, you know possibly a little more it seems like there is compression on the vocals already i think right there is yeah yeah but you know you could maybe do a little grittier or more aggressive compression okay my i felt a little bit like the vocal was a little kind of lighter than the song and the subject matter you know like i felt like it could have a little more intensity maybe okay um so that's what I got. Anybody else have any Excellent. feedback they'd like to uh, like to weigh in with? I think the drum syncopation on like how it really like almost like clashed in like a really musical way with the bass line, like kind of gave it like a really cool groove. I really like that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the complexity is really in the drums and the cool toms and, and stuff. Um, which which a lot of program drums people don't met people don't use tom toms you know so like you did a great you added a great um, and the way it interacts with the bass uh, like you're saying I think that's really great. Cool. I think it was cool to hear like a, a full length piece from Ivan because he does much of these one minute songs. Um, which did this one start as a one minute song? I'm curious. No. No, actually, this one. I mean. I, I've been, you know, after doing like a year of one minute songs for yeah. both artistic and in Instagram purposes, um, I, uh, you know, I did this one and I just kind of felt like it was continuing to come. So it was, it was conceived of as a full length song from the start. Well, yeah, I think it's, it definitely works as a longer form piece and it's cool to see you getting back into that. Yeah, I'm, I was feeling a little, I started after feeling like I really, got a lot out of that forum now i'm starting to feel a little hemmed in by it so i'm i'm stretching the length back out again gotcha now sounds good man thank you nice 
Great. Um, cool. Thank you, Brent. So yeah, thank you. And let's go with um, the next one I had up, which I think was um, Henry's. Is that right? Um, yes. So I think right. kind of a bit of a like a precursor before this. I am. Um, Oh, I just lost you for some reason. Oh, so I guess here, I'll hop on and try to fix that link real quick. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, so this, I make mainly um, kind of heavier bass house music. So a bit of a, like a different direction than Ivan. Um, great. So I guess this track was, I made this recently while stuck at home and um, I thought it'd be cool to get some like early feedback on the track. Um, cool. Um, I noticed when I was playing my song that I was able to hear some of the ambient room noise from I think other people. So maybe if everybody mutes while the music is playing, that'll make it cleaner. Yeah, great. I can try resending the link too. Okay, yeah, and if you just wanna send the um, I mean, I, the link here, so are you, are you re establishing that SoundCloud link? You also could just send me an MP3 or, or send it to Thomas and you can get it to me. Oh, here. Um, how's this? Um, if I just switch the, here, try reloading the page. I think it should work now. All right. Here we go. Cool. All right. And um, I muted and then I, I muted as I was telling you guys to mute your mics. I did it first. Um, let's go ahead and mute our mics and, and give our attention to Henry Thrill, Ride or Die. CJ Park, never been in league with ice. Cold as bright as my guys. Know that they fly, know that they ride or die. Page with three in the bits. Whoa, swear my dog. Never knew you like that. Never knew you like that. Oh, I ain't the third of the sun. CJ Park, never been in league with ice. Cold as bright as my guys. Know that they fly, know that they ride or die.
nice job. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. Great work. Um, yeah, the, the mix sounds really super strong and like everything's really in its place, which is, which is uh, like really strong bass drums, production, everything. Great work. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, where did your, where's the acapella from? Um, I found it online from like this vocal sample pack on Splice. Okay. Oh, nice. Who's the artist? I'm just curious. Or did it say, or is it just like one of those Splice? It's just one of those Splice packs. Right. <laughs> vocals. Yeah. It's great. I really like the way um, you, what, did it come processed in different ways or did you do the processing in all the different ways? Um, it came kind of dry and I added most of the processing to fit the key of the track and to make it, um, I lowered the formant a bit just to like make it a bit deeper. Right. Yeah. I noticed at the end in particular, you had, that was like a formant thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, I see something in the chat here about the mono. Um, um, yeah, actually I, I have, I generally have stereo enabled on mine, but Thomas, is it possible yours wasn't stereo enabled? I should be able to check that in the preferences, right? Yeah, it's also possible that, um, I mean, I updated recently too. So it is possible that it didn't keep my preference or something. Anyway, it would be nice to have the stereo, right? Enable stereo, yeah, mine's on. Um, but- It looks like it might be on my end. I think I have to go to the web portal quick. So let me set okay. that up. Well, yeah, and meantime, cool. So um, anyway, what else? Yeah, I wanted to ask you also where um, there's a bass sound in particular. It's like the sort of like really rattly bass sound. Um, yeah. Uh, wh where'd you, where is that bass sound from? You know what I'm talking about? I think so, yeah. If it's the one that I think you're talking about, it's it's just this sample that I found and I processed it a bit just to make it more aggressive mm -hmm. um, and to like kind of like really fit the song more. I feel like I really like working with samples. Um, I feel like I have a lot more like like different options that you can work with, like rather than using like a preset on like a VST or something. Uh -huh. uh, so I work a lot with samples. And so that was a sample from this like big bass sample pack that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I like I heard it. And I'm like, oh, this could I think this like could like use some fixing like here and here, here, like some EQ. Like there's some really harsh resonant frequencies that I, uh, I um, EQ'd out and uh, a bit of distortion. Great. Yeah. Let me, let me see. Um, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Nice. I feel like um, I'm, cu I'm curious what they, how they made that sound. I feel like massive um, back maybe like eight years ago, 10 years ago, um, that massive had really good was the first synth that I knew of that would made that kind of crazy rattly. I, I don't know how to describe that sound, you know. It's like yeah. A, um, and that was that that the trick was you, there were certain some presets in massive that I think used a certain wavetable that had that particular thing to yeah. it. Um, anyway, but it, it's a great sound. Thank you. Um, yeah, and so you're you're working a lot. You're working in Ableton, is that right? Um, I mainly use FL Studio. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Just like the workflow kind of works best. I use Ableton sometimes if I'm like, if I kind of get stuck. So I like mm -hmm. I go over to Ableton just like kind of like fresh, like freshen up a bit. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, we do have we do have like all these different uh, DAWs here today. That's great. Um, and you know what, I, I had a, I taught a songwriting class recently at 343, um, like a, you know, 12 week songwriting uh, workshop. And 
we had a couple, we had two or three people who used FL Studio and they made amazing sounding stuff in FL Studio. You know, I was really impressed because that's one I haven't ever really used, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. And so, and a lot of this is, is samples that you're finding mainly on Splice. Yeah. Right. Or like yeah. the weird packs on Reddit. <laughs> uh, okay, nice. Yeah, there's a lot of great resources out there for that stuff. Um, cool. So yeah, any anybody else have um, any feedback or appreciations for Henry's piece here? I would just say that uh, going off what Brent said initially is that the mix sounds really good. Everything sounds like it's in the right place, which is um, I'm not sure how long you've been producing for it, but it can be really difficult to achieve that, you know, and it sounds like you're really getting close to the sound that you're aiming for. So I would say props to you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I like the track. I like, I like the way it opened. Um, um, it just like drew you right in and it had conveyed like a strong sense of, of fun right from the outset, which I thought was, was good. And then that kind of hooked me immediately and then kind of kept my interest. And then I liked, I liked sort of the textures of the depth and also as, as Brent mentioned the bass, I thought it was, uh, you know, it's not even fully my style of music necessarily that I listen to every day. But I felt like, you know, this one kind of, you know, it, it hooked me pretty nicely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and Paul asked a question, if you're thinking about uh, lengthening it. Um, I don't think I might make an extended mix. Um, just like add a, like, like beats on the front end and the back end, just um, for like DJ purposes to make it easier to mix. Um, but I kind of... I, I know I, I tend to keep my tracks like pretty short, like under three minutes, just like for attention span purposes. Sorry, nice. And I like the way you brought in the vocal in a couple different ways throughout. So that like, you know, that was its sort of feeling of, of progression. And then once you'd kind of done that a few ways then you're then you're out, you know? And I, I also see that with a vocal like this, you're kind of a song like this is kind of built around a line. It's not built around like verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or something like that. And so in that sense, maybe it's good to get in and get out because it's, you know, it's not going to the, uh, it's using the same lyric, right? right so yeah. it's not like there's 10 verses of lyrics to say or something. Yeah. So yeah, great job. Um, Thank you. Yeah, nice work. And um, you know what, I, I'll, I'll say one thing that I, I thought of that is like, it's, um, it's not necessarily right or wrong, but I noticed that there's kind of a, a riser, like a white noise thing that happens before the drops that, that kind of builds up and then it fades out and then the drop happens. And it made me wonder if it shouldn't either build right up to the drop or fade out quicker, maybe. But it's okay. I mean, it's not wrong how it is now either, but it's just my, it would be like maybe what I would do or something. Yeah. Do you, you know what I'm referring to? Yeah. I think maybe there's one here. I'll just play it for everyone. Never knew you like that. Well, here we go. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, like really tiny thing. There's maybe that moment happens a couple of times. Maybe. Here yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So that was just like, you know, getting into my own. And again, it's, it's up to you. But like in terms of my own idea for the micro details that maybe like I would probably just maybe snip that so that vocal got left completely naked for a second yeah might, might like make that jump jump out at you more mm -hmm. or something you know so yeah just a little thought anyway great work thank you yeah um all right so let's move on and um oh good we have a few other folks showing up um let's see ivan hello and why am i not seeing names on here 
Um, and who else do we have? Uh, all right, I'm not seeing names, but okay, let's continue on. So I was going to play the track that I received from Dice. Let me get that going. And here's from Dice. Um, I just realized my power cord isn't here, so give me one second. All right then, um, this is from Dice Suzuki from New York. Um, let me share this up. And um, great, if everybody wants to, yeah, please mute yourselves and Give your attention to Dice Suzuki. Here we go.
Yeah. Oh, I sorry, I just un yeah, there we go. Beautiful work. Uh really nice track. Really nice. Um it was uh, you know, of course, like not knowing what genre where people are coming from here, I, it was like I didn't know what was going to happen after, you know, when these first chords were happening until the beat really dropped in. It's a very pleasant surprise to, you know, when that happens. Um, and uh, so you're using Cubase, I believe, right? And actually, where's my chat window? There we go. Um, Yes. Okay, great. So, um, oh, that's all right, Dice. So I'm just looking at the chat now. Um, so you use Cubase, I believe you said. And um, I wanted to ask you what, um, what you use to make the sounds, like in particular, I'm curious about, um, about the string sounds and just like what what synths you're using, if it's like a lot of things that are built into Cubase or maybe like native instruments, something like that. Yeah, contact strings. Mm -hmm. Right, silent, of course, that's great. Yeah, nice. And um, you would, maybe you did some processing on those on the strings from contact, is that right? Gotcha. Yeah, I hear you about the expensive libraries. Yeah, you, um, you did a great job of, um, I really like the way you wrote the string parts. So they're um, like, I really love this. There's a little um, string fall off that happens right before the beat drops. Did you all catch that? It's a really nice moment. Um, it happens twice that I recall, but here's here's the first time. Let me go back and play that. Oh, maybe it's that little thing. Um, and that's such a cool. Uh, anyway. I personally, I really like when people take the time to do the string programming in such a way that it sounds like a real string player, like that really sounded like the violins like sliding from one note to the other. And it's a cool, um, one thing that's really nice to have is some sort of a little warning before a beat drops. And you know, one, one thing that people do for that is in electronic music, a lot of times people put in, you know, risers or sweeps or things. I was talking to Henry about that with that kind of thing, right? And in this, and so that could be one kind of buildup, right? Shh, boom. But what you did is just like a little, there's a little warning something's about to happen. And then right as you hear that, bam, the beat drops in. So anyway, very, very effective. I like that a lot. And it's nice to give people sometimes some little, um, just some tiny warning, or I think of it as something that kind of makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up for a moment, like, ooh, something's about to happen, and then boom, it happens. So even just the timing of that was, was just really nice. So great job. Um, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, EDM, pop, and hip hop. Yeah, definitely. I hear that. And I would say by way of feedback, um, the one thing that I felt like could use some work is the intro, maybe this first section up till here. Like, so the first 30 seconds. Um, I just felt like they could use a little more, a little more spice somehow, like a little more magic. And I think that you, I mean, I think you have the right impulse and you're keeping that very simple so that when the other stuff comes in, it's like a big surprise. 
but I feel like maybe if you can find some way to give it a little sparkle or a little something different happening, it'll keep people curious about what's going to happen so that they so that they keep listening until the beat really drops, if you know what I mean. Um, like it's maybe very plain in the beginning, which is cool, but I, that was just maybe a, a thought I'd explore. It could be a matter of putting a little bit of some kind of shimmery effect on there, or maybe using a little bit of the, there's some kind of reverse sounds that happen a little later in the song. Maybe you can sneak a few of those into the intro too. That'd be another possibility. Uh, the reverse sounds I'm thinking about are, I forget if they're in this part or in the next part. Yeah, you guys hear this little kind of, um, I'm not quite sure what it is, but exactly it's some kind of, sounds like a reversed tinkly percussion. Oh yeah, I see. Reverse glass breaking. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's a glass breaking and then it reverses. Yeah. Very cool. So those are some ideas for that intro. Maybe you could sneak in some of that with some huge long delays on it or something. So it was just had a little sparkle in there. Um, anybody else want to add anything? Uh, I'm not here. We're not hearing you, Henry. Are you, or I'm not hearing you. Oh, anyone. yeah. Yeah. I think if you could find some vocals that went like kind of well, like, like fit the vibe of the track, um, I think it could really like, really like tie the track together and make it like a full song. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have Ellie Golding's number? Let me check my phone. Uh, no. I don't. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a nice fit, though, wouldn't it? Um, maybe there's an Ellie Vo Ellie Golding style vocalist on Fiverr or something that you could get. Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm not sure how many of you guys know about. Um, there's a website called Fiverr. I have not used it personally, but it's this right here. I actually, um, I found a vocalist for one of my tracks on there and it went really well. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. And so, you know, you can get all kinds of, find all kinds of things on here. Um, I mean, quite cheaply a lot of times. Um, so I had a student in one of my Ableton classes and he was saying that, um, he was saying that he wanted, he was like in his dreams here, he would have like a, classical guitarist play some like little riffs on his like kind of pop Lady Gaga style pop track. And I said, well, just go on Fiverr and you know, you can really type in classical guitar and here's all these people who want to record on your song for a pretty low price. Um, and uh, so I was recommending to him maybe have them do that, have them just maybe play over the whole thing and then maybe just take a few little snippets and make samples out of those. And, um, oh yeah, so, oh yeah, Dice said you're working on marketing for Sound Better, right? Yeah. Is it soundbetter.com? Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, by marketing, does that mean you're you're offering services on on Sound Better? Oh, nice. Is and what sort of services? Production. Um, you know, I've got a. Okay, great. Well, good. I'm, I'd love to know how you're doing with that. I have a friend who's actually doing really well with this, um, by the way, and I'll just put in a little plug for, for my friend. Um, let's see, actually, I'll just do it this way. It's, it's Mount, uh, Mount Olympia Mastering. So he's a mastering engineer. Um, and 
you know, he's got a, he's got a real mastering setup. This is the kind of thing that's like, you know, I mean, each piece of gear in this rack, I mean, this, this crazy, this is like some sort of hand wound mastering EQ that, you know, it's like a $10,000 EQ, you know, stuff like this. These speakers are probably another 10 grand each, something like that. Anyway, he's got, He's a great engineer, great master engineer, great room, great everything. <laughs> the same mouse, yeah. Yeah, I have the same sticky pad right here. Mine's the same color yellow. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, and his, and his rates are quite reasonable. But I think he's actually been doing this on sound better and getting quite a bit of business, if I recall. Let me see. Um, Oh yeah, here it is, Sound Better Profiles. He said that Sound Better has been working really well for him and he's been getting quite a bit of work from it. Um, I mean, you can see he's already got, you know, almost 200 five-star reviews. I mean, he's really good. And he's wound up working for, yeah, Migos, Childish Gambino, a lot of people. Um, so I highly recommend it if you have, um, you know, 80 bucks or something want to hear what your song would sound like going through a really like top level mastering chain and having a top level mastering engineer. But anyway, good, good, uh, sound, good thing working on sound better. Um, great. Anybody else have anything else they wanted to mention about Dice's track here? Cool. Great work. And, um, so what do we have next? Um, Sushant. Um, yeah, right? I just um, sent over Sushant's. He had a SoundCloud link as well. It should be, uh, you might have to refresh, but yeah, this last right. week. You know. All right. Fantastic. Welcome, Sushant. Hey. Um, and uh, Sushant, where are you based? I'm based out of San Jose, California. Oh, okay. Nice. Welcome. We Thank got you. folks from all over today. Um, and uh, great. So without further ado, let's listen and then, and then we'll chat. Let's have everybody uh, mute your microphones, please.
Great, nice job. Nice track. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. So um, where, what software are you using for this? I'm using Ableton Live. Okay, yeah, great. And where, and what synths are you using or where are you finding your sounds? I'm um, using Serum and Hive. Okay, great. Yeah, I, um, you did a great job of keeping it interesting with automations and making it feel like there's kind of always something um, changing and progressing. I mean, hence, you know, progressive house, right? It's like things are always, something's growing and something else is, you know, morphing or whatever. So I, I uh, great job with the automations on that. Um, you know, obviously I feel like it can be longer, especially for the genre. Um, yeah. And because um, you, you have, so, so things have time to grow, grow and change, but yeah, really nice work. Um, I like hearing, I'll, I'll just point out a few examples that I remember from that, if I can kind of remember the timing. Um, there's a really nice buildup that happens here. That was a nice one. And then actually right after that, there's another one that happens um, with the synth getting more aggressive. Nice. Great. And so those are automations you're making on the, on the serum within serum. Yeah, so um, the baseline is Serum, and uh, the uh, the arc that you're listening to is on mm -hmm. Hive. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I did the cutoff uh, automation uh, mm -hmm. on, on the Hive, and the baseline is uh, almost constant. Um, um, on the breakdown, I did uh, cut down the uh, the highs. Mm -hmm. uh, on the baseline, then gradually I brought it back. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I really, I really um, like what you're working with, and it really, it has a real, has a real feeling of like the right kind of mix and everything. And mm -hmm. um, I would say, if I was going to make one, you know, constructive critique, I would say that your, you could go even more extreme with your dynamics, you know like the the kind of breakdown quieter parts maybe could be even softer or a little bit maybe washier with more delays and reverbs or something just to have more contrast so that when your drop when your beat drops back in it's that much bigger and more exciting you know um, um, yeah i'll make a note of that yeah and like for instance on that drop that i just played a minute ago um you know sometimes there's a way to make it like feel like it's building and yet it's not you know sometimes it's all also something else is almost even getting smaller so that that way when the beat drops let me just play one part again uh, Yeah, like, may, I'm not sure what that would be. Per, maybe it's that um, as that thing is rising, you could have the low end of your bass actually disappearing. Okay. And so that way, some, you know, some way that it's like, it feels like it's getting more exciting, but it's also thinning out in a way that you didn't even notice is missing. But then when it drops back in, you're like, oh yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Just a little to increase that contrast. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, um, thinning, thinning some of those things out. But um, oh, and and I had one other idea. Maybe are you, you're doing some side chaining in here? Are yeah, you? I'm doing a lot, a lot of side chaining. <laughs> well, there's definitely a lot of side chaining. I noticed in the beginning. One spot that I didn't, um, that I thought you could use it is on that kind of 
uh, riser, that kind of um, this sort of like white noise thing that's happening in that buildup that I just played could be another spot where it could be going shh, 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 or something. Got it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. I'll make a note of it. Great job. Um, anybody else have any thoughts they'd like to share? I thought the uh, the mix was really tight. Uh, the synths all sounded good. The effects sounded good. It was cool. Definitely a cool vibe overall. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, there's a note from Dice here saying TB303 acid lines would go nice. Yeah, it has that kind of it has that kind of uh, 303 acid feel in the bass. That's that's great. Um, yeah, anyway, nice track. Thank you. Cool. And um, anybody else have thoughts? Do we do we have anything else up on the uh, on the queue from people who any from anyone who's here? Um, I think we've gotten through a track for each person. If anybody we're leaving anybody out, please speak now or you know hop in the chat. Um, I know Ivan had a couple more short ones if we wanted to do that. Um, All right, cool. And I know Paul, um, Paul, you're going to bring something in the future, it sounds like. so. Um, and you know, I actually have, would you guys like to hear something of mine that I'm working on? That would be great, Brent. Um, you know, great. So um, I've got, I've got a few things in the pipeline, but I thought I'd play you guys something um, if we had the time for it, which we do. Uh, so there's a there's a group I work with called Lullabies for Falling Empires. Um, I've been sort of an adjunct member of this group for for many years now, and we're working on a new album together. Um, so this is a song called Horizon. Um, the music, uh, well, maybe I'll just let you guys hear it rather than talk too much about it. But um, it's something we've, we were working on for a while and then we kind of put on the shelf and then I just, we just came back to it. So I'll play it first and we can talk after. And I'm gonna mute my mic. If, it, if everyone wants to do the same, that'd be great.
There it is, still in progress. That was awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. It's a very beautiful composition. I thought, yeah, I thought that was really super cool, very immersive, very sort of, you know. Um, sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, no, that was just very immersive, it was very um, cinematic. It was very, you know, it felt like it was transporting you somewhere. So I think it was pretty great. No, oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's um, it's a nice. It was a nice kind of strange chord progression, and then the um with the ukulele on there, and then just recently I I added those. I added the cello melody and I and played those parts in. Um, I'm a cellist, and for the people who arrived late and didn't hear that part, so so there's always a lot of cello on things. When I, That's <laughs> when cool. I it. Cello is good. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, thanks for listening, you guys. It's really nice to have um, have somebody, have other people hear your mix, right? You hear it through new ears. Um, let's see, Dice is asking how I mic the cello. So I actually just bought a new microphone that I'm excited about. I was, I was thinking about, I had my eye on a more expensive one, but now with this new, uh, scary world we're living in. I wasn't sure I can afford the, the um, expensive one, but I, but I did get a mic I'm quite happy with. It's uh, made by Warm Audio, if you know this company. Um, and uh, let's see here. I really want the WA-47, which is about a $900 microphone. But I settled for the um, 47 Junior, which is 300. Um, and I'm really happy with how it's sounding on the cello. Um, I also got a, got a new cello within the last year that, let's just say it costs more than, than a microphone. <laughs> but, um, and that makes a big difference. But I'm very happy with the sound that I'm getting. And this was actually just this microphone at about um foot and a half away about half a meter away from the cello and it's basically kind of with the microphone looking at basically where the bow crosses the strings which is also kind of centered on the f holes which are the part that you know projects the sound out so you know it i i do a lot of different miking on the on cello and on strings, depending on what I'm going for. And I like to experiment, but uh, this was like a very standard way to do it. Um, if you what can, kind of processing did you uh, put on the cello recording? Well, there's definitely some, there's definitely a little compression and there's definitely a little EQ, but aside from that, it's just uh, yeah. some reverbs and delay. I think mm -hmm. I have three reverbs on this track. I tend to use two to three reverbs, let's say two to four reverbs on a, for a song. And um, I'll usually have a very, very short, you know, like extremely short, almost like a slapback kind of reverb. Um, sometimes you can find a preset that'll say like, you know, uh, you know, bathroom or, uh, or even some, and even sometimes I'll shrink that one down a little bit, little bit, but just to give a little bit of like a immediate reflection. Mm -hmm. So that'll be in one reverb, send, uh, you know, send and return situation. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have like kind of a medium, medium one, and then a longer one. And sometimes I'll have a separate plate reverb. Um, in a song like this, I might have an extremely long one. There's a setting I really like on this. I have this fab filter reverb and there is a preset that's called black hole that is extremely long. Um, and I like to throw some stuff into that. So basically I'll have three or four reverbs set up and I'm using my reverb sends to just, for each track in the song, I'm putting different amounts in it depending on kind of where I wanna place it in space. Um, and I also had a, a send for a, for a delay and I, I really like, uh, I really like the Sound Toys plugins. 
if you guys know those. Um, those are, um, a bunch of them are available for free now through, I think, June 30th. Oh, um, oh yeah. Um, Let's uh, see. Yeah, see, there we go. Oh, wow, interesting. So I was um, gonna grab that. I just found out about that this morning on, uh, wow. on, on Reddit, I think. You know, yeah, and these are, um, the plugins they make are, I mean, they sound great and they're very diverse. They have a, there's a vintage aspect to them, but you can use them in all kinds of styles. Um, and, oh, okay, so they're letting you use it for free through June 30th, and then I guess you're, yeah, yeah. maybe then you're hooked and you and you want to pay for it or something. That's the idea. Um, ah, I see. So they're including some, but not all of the plugins. Okay. Anyway, the um, they do put their plugins on sale quite often. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I would say in particular, well, like this one is great, Decapitator. Um, it's like they say, it, you can use it for just some very subtle uh, warming up or grouping things together, but you can also get kind of crazy with it. Crystallizer does some, um, I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot of nice stuff, but I would say in particular, I'm definitely using the Echo Boy on this. That's my choice for delays. And um, I'm also using on this song, uh, sometimes I was using de Decapitator to warm things up in a sort of analog way. Um, and I, I like this EQ for, for some applications. Um, it's a lot more limited and limiting than using a you know, built-in parametric EQ, like there, or a built-in, uh, yeah, parametric. But sometimes it's nice to have those limitations so you're not over-tweaking things. And then uh, if you ever, this, this limiter here, Devil Lock Deluxe, is really great. It's extremely aggressive. Um, so Ivan, I, when I thought of doing something with your vocals, yeah, I thought if it was up to me, I'd probably try putting this devil lock uh, All right. cool. on the vocals. And what's really important with the devil lock is the mix knob because it's a very extreme limiting that it puts on things. It has a lot of character. And so a lot of times you want to get a lot of that character with the, these crush and crunch knobs, but then, then I'll like turn the mix all the way to zero so mm -hmm. I'm not actually hearing any of this. I'm just hearing the dry signal. And mm -hmm. then I'll sneak it in with the mix. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you have it set on 10, it's if you're doing something absolutely nuts. But a lot of times I have this on, but it's set on two or three yeah. on the mix. And that'll be, often that's plenty. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't, I don't get a cut of sales from them. I'm not, I'm not working for them. I just uh, wanted to mention that I do and enjoy these a lot. So that's oh, some nice. of what you're hearing on there. Nice. And uh, yeah, the, and also sometimes I put a bunch of mics on the cello or I do a bunch of creative stuff, but this one, it was like basically one nice microphone, foot and a half away, maybe up to two feet away, sometimes a foot away, just real simple. And then it's just about, you know, uh, the song. Brent, did you have any uh, breakthroughs like when it comes to recording cello? I mean, you've been playing cello for a long time, I'm assuming. Yeah. And at some point, I don't know if it was from the start or not, you probably got more into recording it. Mm -hmm. Was there any moments throughout that process where you were just like, oh, wow, now I got to remember to do this every time or any any moments there like that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I feel like I've had those things. But, and like, you find a way that works and you're like, it's amazing. And then like maybe a few years later, maybe you're just tired of it or you find a new way and you're like, wow, this is the breakthrough. But, um, you know, but so it, maybe it's just cause it's always a learning process. But um, I would say, here's something somebody told me that stuck with me. And I think this is really true. Um, don't get too obsessed with your gear it is important to have a good gear, but um, you know, it's the most important thing is the source. 
And that means if it's a vocalist, the most important thing is the vocalist, not the microphone, not the um, you know, preamps, not the converters, not the software. It's definitely the vocalist, you know? And same with, with me, it's the cello. And even more important than the cello is the artist who's, who's playing the cello, right? The performer. I mean, exactly, the performer and the ideas that the performer has. And so if you think about it as a, you know, think about it as a chain of um, importance. Somebody told me this and I try to keep it in mind. So number one is the performer. When, you, when you're recording something, that's number one. Number two is the performer's instrument. That might be their voice or their whatever instrument they're playing. That's, you might say that's half as important as, who the, as the quality of the performer is the quality of the instrument. Then half as important as that or less is the microphone. And then half as important as that is the preamp. Half as important as that is the converter. Half as important as, as that is the DAW or whatever. You know what I mean? So like, so I've, I've met people who go like, oh, I can't make good sounding vocals because I don't have a good, I don't have these expensive mic preamps or something. And it's like, hey, if you've got a, if you've got a great singer or even a good singer, you know, you can make music, you know, believe me. Or, you know, even a bad singer with a great idea, you can make music, you know? The stuff at the beginning of the chain is more important than the stuff at the end of the chain. You know? Yeah, I think that, that's yeah. really cool. I think that's really powerful advice. I mean, we've all seen those people who have the greatest gear that we all wish we could afford and just don't have, you know, the musical factor, the side of it to really make something great out of it. And then we've seen vice versa, people who are have very limited resources, but have all that raw talent and ability and they're able to pull off, you know, amazing things. So I think that's a really cool way to break it down, you know, kind of step by step in the process. Yeah. And I think that you, um, it's uh, and other things that are really within your power sometimes um, that people don't think about. It's like the room you're recording in is yeah. also very important in the recording in terms of the sound and also the placement of the microphone. And again, that's free. You don't have to buy an expensive microphone. You can take the cheap one you have and try it. Even if it's recording a vocal, try it, you know, this far away, try it this far away, try it a little above your pointing at, pointing at your mouth, trying pointing a little below. So, you know, take the time. It's never enough to just say, oh, I'm gonna put this thing in front of my face and, and sing or whatever. Uh, I mean, that can work, but I there's a lot. a lot of magic you can, you can find <laughs> by just putting the time in on that, you know? So. Yeah, actually that aspect of live recording stresses me out from that reason, because I feel as though there are so many ways to do it and you could spend an infinite amount of time trying to get it right. But I think your point is well taken. And I would say, and even before you get to any of those, the things that you're talking about, like the ideas have to be there. The songwriting has to be there. The words have to be good words, you know? And it's like, I've heard, you know, I don't know how many good quote unquote pristine sounding things that I've heard, but I was a little left unmoved by because just there was, it wasn't offering me enough in terms of its creative content. Yeah, no, that's really true. And I mean, you don't have to be perfectionist on any of these things. Don't let the stuff hold you up. I mean, I think if somebody has a song and there's one line that they can't find the right line, sometimes you just, it's okay. You can have one line in your song. It's not the greatest, it's okay. <laughs> you know, but, but I agree with you. It, in general, uh, all those things are, are where it really comes from. And, it, and, it, and if you have a good idea and a good impulse, um, go with it and create with that, you know? There's another great saying, uh, it's not the wand, it's the magician. Right. You know? <laughs> no, no, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so. Can I ask you a question um, with regard to, um, I guess it's a logic question, but maybe it's a general question, which is, I just end up using a lot of software instruments. I, I record very little. On most of my songs, it's really just the vocal I'm recording. 
And for the most part, I'm using Logic stock instruments. And that's just partially because they're pretty robust and it hasn't made me feel like I go need to explore everything out there. With that said, I do use a lot of software guitar and it's hard to get software guitar sounding good. Um, and, yeah. and uh, you know, I, and I think like you can, I can take it a little more if there's, if it's a style that has a lot of effects on it, like in the song that you heard, um, you know, a lot of delays and a lot of reverbs and that kind of thing. But so I guess my question is, do you have, you know, short of actually recording a live guitar, which right now is challenging because I don't play guitar. Um, the, you know, um, do you have any suggestions for, you know, the best way to fake it in software? Mm. So guitar is a hard one to fake in software. I totally agree. Um, and uh, so I have a couple thoughts on that. Number one is, you know, Logic has some guitars that sound decent. Yeah. Sampled note by note, you know, but of course the problem is a guitar isn't the same as a keyboard in terms of what, what sounds idiomatic, right? Like if you just hit one, if you play one note of that guitar sample, you might say, Hey, that sounds like a great guitar. But when you play several notes, you, your ear just goes, that's not a guitarist playing that. That's a, you know, um, so I think there's a couple ways. I've actually um, used a lot of, used a lot of, um, sometimes when I faked it on Logic, the trick is to just do things that work. You know, in other words, I might have a guitar idea, if, but I'm playing it in and I can't, if I can't make it sound real, then I might have to change the idea to one that happens to work with that. So a lot of it's just do what- I think I've done the same. Do I, what I works here instead of what you yeah. wanna do. You know, and sometimes since I do play guitar and I understand it a bit, if I have to play something on the keyboard, I might think, well, you know, that I could leave the open E string ringing. So maybe I'll make that, I'll leave that MIDI note playing really long as if it was the open E string ringing while mm -hmm. I have the other ones shorter. Mm -hmm. You know, you can kind of plan it yeah. out like a guitarist would. But I think if you're using what's built into Logic, the only way is to just use what works and give up on what doesn't work. And that's okay. the only way to make it sound realistic. I guess that's what I've and then, been doing. And, and if there's third party that, stuff, like I'm certainly open to getting it too, of course. And then I would say there, there is some third party stuff, things for strumming, for instance, there are a couple mm -hmm. of virtual, you know, there are like contact instruments out there that are virtual guitars that do strumming and are very specific and well-built and sound really good and like a real strumming guitar. And that's something you can't fake with just individual samples. Right. You need to- Right, 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 that's a good point. And um, Dice is mentioning something here, chopping up loops. And that, uh, exactly, that's a great way to do it because if it's a loop of somebody really playing it on a real guitar, right? then just use, use that. Um, and, you, and Dice also mentioned the great point, which is outsource Fiverr. <laughs> you know, no, no, I'm glad that you mentioned that today because no. it's something that it's like, I, I, I keep forgetting like, oh, that, that resource is available and that is a good resource, especially now. It especially yeah. now. And, you know, I have some mixed feelings about it personally, because, you know, I've also been a professional session musician. Right. And the idea that somebody's out there saying, hey, I'll record cello on your album for five bucks or whatever. Right. I'm like, hey, <laughs> right. you know, um, I won't even, I mean, it's like sort of insulting to think that you would do oh, anything course. professional for five dollars, right? I mean... I feel like if somebody asked me to say hello to them for five dollars, I would tell them to go to hell. I mean, I'll say I'll do it for free, but not for five dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just I get it. yes, no, I on get principle. It. I um, get it. But uh, but especially in this moment, I think that you know, I I don't have the option to have somebody come over and play it anyway, right now with this with the lockdown. And furthermore, you know, one thing that Fiverr allows is, um, I don't know, what do you call this, arbitrage or something? It's basically that a lot of the people who are on there live in a country where the exchange rate is really extreme. So the right. fact that you're paying them $15 to play some guitar, well, you know, they might live in Bangladesh and $15 
goes a very long way. <laughs> right, right, you know? right. So right. that's that's what the site allows people to do. Um, but anyway, the, yeah, those are my recommendations. But I think the other way is just do what works. And if it doesn't work, you have to just change your plan. Right. Um, you know, it just occurred to me, I, I one time was, I had a gig, um, a, a somebody I work with who's a commercial, um, let's see, uh, here we go. Um, somebody I know who's a, who's a commercial director, um, he was doing commercial. Well, I've kind of given it away now. It was for this company, Weebly. They're like a... Oh, yeah. Um, no. Oh, I guess I said I gave it away because it's on the name of this track. Um, oh. Anyway, um, let me bring this up. Anyway, they... He was doing a commercial from them, for them. And I had said that he had asked me to do the music for it. And I said I would. But then when he actually suddenly contacted me to, and said like, okay, we're in a rush. We have to get the music done. I was actually on vacation where I'd been doing a project in France and I was like staying in this little village in the south of France and I barely had internet access and I didn't have anything but my laptop and I just had lo logic, that was it. Like only the built-in stuff in logic. And I had to do music for this, for this funny commercial. And I basically had to, I couldn't admit that I didn't have my whole studio with me because I, I just need, I had to make it really impressive and with literally nothing but just the built-in sounds and logic. And the only microphone I had was the built-in mic on my laptop. So I made this kind of funny commercial track, um, which has guitar in it and some other things. And I was actually pretty proud of it. I mean, it's very silly, but here, I'll play it for you guys. Uh, very great. Silly, right? Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. How, how did you get those bends like in the beginning? Well, you know, so that's an example of what I'm talking about. One of the, um, uh, you know what? I don't remember if it was, if I did it with the pitch bend wheel. I think I did it with the pitch bend wheel. But it was one of those things where the guitar chord, I think, was just a built in guitar you know, car, guitar chord preset that was pre-sampled in Logic, I think. Anyway, I did, I painstakingly did things to make them sound like a real guitar and like that, the bend and make it just the way you would bend a, uh, you know, the whammy bar on a guitar. But again, believe me, there were 10 other things that I tried that I thought would be cool, but I, it didn't sound like a real guitar, so I threw them out. But that one, I managed to get the strum of the guitar just right, playing, you know, getting each note going, bring, and then doing the bend with the pitch wheel. And I, and when I did it right, I was like, that sounds real. So I'll use it, you know? And then other things I tried, didn't sound real, throw it out, you know? And just by keeping the ones that worked and get, getting rid of the ones that didn't, um, I think it came out really good. And then they had some kind of, creative blow up at the company and the entire agency got fired off the project and I never got paid for it. So um, <laughs> that sucks. But you got a cool thing. It you, happens all you, the time. you did a cool thing, but it happens. Yeah. And you know, one of these days, some commercial is going to come along that needs that song and maybe they'll buy it from me, you know? So, um, all right. So, we could kind of wrap up. Oh, I know there was, there was mention of listening to something else of Ivan's, um, and I. I mean, I, I, I included I, a couple of other links to a couple of one-minute instrumentals that I've written recently. Um, that, if you want to take a minute and listen, sure, that'd be great. Cool. Let's hear a couple if nobody has any objections, and then um, 
Maybe that'll do that. So I have two that came up that yeah. were in that same link. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Dislocated. Um, let's mute our mic. Nice one. Yeah, very cool. Um, and so you've been making you you've been making one minute Instagram friendly songs. Yeah, Is yeah, that, that was kind of yeah, as sort of uh, and you know, uh, as trying to figure out a way to generate regular Instagram content, I didn't really feel like posting pictures of myself or or behind the scenes or that kind of thing. And I got this idea to like write one minute songs. And then I wrote like 70 of them last year. I tried to oh, write really? one a week. Nice. Yeah. Oh, great. That's good practice. And um, that's good producing practice too, right? Just it has of... been, it absolutely has been. And I've been regularly going to these feedback sessions too and being able to like always come in with like two or three songs and get feedback on, on them has, has I think certainly helped me up my game some as well as help me get to know the DAW better. Yeah. Um, I think if you wanted my one quick feedback note on yeah, that one please. was, yeah. I wished that the very end, I wish that the reverb tails cut off. Ah, yeah, okay. You know, I kind of yeah. felt like it should just go da 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 or whatever. Let me hear it again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's the gotcha. delay. It's the that one delay that echoes on. I, yeah. I now I, I I remember what I thought at the time. I wish it went. There's that la, there's that synth that goes. The last two notes are dun dun. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I kind of wish that was really the end. Maybe it because like, it's like so yeah. kind of quaint to end it on like da 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 dun dun. Yeah. And I yeah. and I kind of thought that should be the last word and without anything tailing off after it. Oh, just my I own like that. personal. I like that. No, I like that feedback. Yeah. Um, anyway, great job. Anybody else have a Thanks. thought on that? Or we can listen to one more. It's a, it's a cool vibe. I like it. I would say the guitar is, uh, we had just had this discussion a little yeah. bit, you know, unauthentic yeah. sounding. But, you know, sometimes it's cool to lean into something like that and just kind of yeah. go for it, you know, given the resources. And you can make something, you know, just as cool out of that sound as, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think I did sort of actually, I, I knew it was sort of an authentic sounding. And in this case, I wasn't that worried about it. Like if it kind of, you know, it was somewhere in between and I figured that was okay. And sometimes I do. Um, I, I agree with you. It's like, if you like lean into, if you lean into fake so that it sounds like you're intent, then I think it's okay. Yeah, exactly. right. I agree. And great. Let's hear one more. The one minute jams. Here we go.
Nice. Yeah, very cool. A little seven eight. Uh, actually, it's thirteen sixteen. Oh, or, 13? Or thirteen. No, or thirteen. It's. I think it's. It's thirteen eight. It's thirteen. It's thirteen eight. It's thirteen eight. Oh. And, so, and some of the breaks are twelve eight. Ah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Um. Yeah, like a seven and six. Yeah. Exactly. Um, like seven yeah, and six. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Um. Great. Yeah, I agree with what Dice just said. Like, totally, a lot of sync possibilities for. Um, I, yeah, I don't know much about that. That's something I would certainly like to know more about. Um, you know, that's a, that's that's a whole separate conversation. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Anyway, really nice. I Thanks. at times I wondered if I, if the drums should be a little drier or something. Maybe just because of the, I like the sound of the, and the kind of uh -huh. boominess, roominess, uh -huh. but the quick tempo of it maybe suggested, made me also maybe want them to be a little bit drier so that it was uh, crisper or something, you know? So that was um, just a thought. Yeah, no, that, that's an interesting thought. I might actually go back and try it that way and see how I like it. Because a lot of these things, you know, it's like sometimes someone literally just needs to say, why don't you try it that way? And then I listen to it and I don't always, then I'm like, okay, now I tried it and that wasn't the right call. But then sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, that's obviously the right thing to do. You yeah. Know? So yeah, and thank you for the suggestion. I feel like they, the drums sit a little behind mm -hmm. the other instruments because of the reverb that and stuff. Of, so yeah. that's just a thought. And if they, um, in some ways, you know, since they, they are very programmed in this case, yes. and maybe making them drier and it will be a little bit like what we just talked about. It'll be like, right, kind they're of just, even more obvious that they're that way. But that maybe right. that's good because you're they're like, not intended to be otherwise. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, nice work. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I thought this was a good example of a track that works at this length really well. Like when there was some sort of satisfied feeling I got when it got to the end, but not in the sense that I'm happy it's over. Almost like I want to play it again. You know. Oh, cool. And it's like, it's just, you know, a lot going on, very engaging for that one minute where it's like, I could, I could see it being like a good model. It's like, get a couple extra streams because people are like, oh, I want to experience that like again, right away, you know? Cool. And the sense and stuff sound really nice. Thanks. Nice. Well, cool. I think- um, Really nice getting everyone's feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Great. Um, Great work, everybody. Really nice to hear everybody's music. Um, hope you'll come back for more feedback sessions and also just stay involved with the school in all the various ways. As we're trying to keep a lot of activities going and a lot of um, yeah, which I think is great. I want to thank all there. of you for uh, for kind of keeping keeping it going. I mean, this is like three for three has been like a big thing for me, like in in 2019. Like it was, you know, like a, I feel like it really helped me develop and I love the community. It's like, it's all really good. And I'm, I'm, so I, I appreciate the effort you're putting into to keeping it good, even now. Well, thanks. thanks, thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice to be here. Yeah, trying, you know, we're all, it's a, bra it's a brave new world. So yeah. trying to figure out how to keep that going yep. and, and make yep. it better. So um, yeah. Thank so, you for the feedback, guys. Yeah, really nice track, Sushant. Yes, thank you, Brent, uh, for joining us this week. We'll be uh, back with another one next weekend. I'm not sure if the instructor has been decided yet. Um, I just wanted to mention two other events we're having this week. They're actually both on Tuesday, how the scheduling worked out. But the first is going to be on Splice, uh, Splice's Twitch channel with Abe. He's doing an uh, intro to mod modular synthesis. So that will be 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Should be really cool. Um, that's part of like a partnership we started with them recently. We're kind of helping them, you know, do their thing and stay, stay kind of known online during this time. And then followed, followed that night, uh, we're going to have at 7 p.m. the Ableton User Group, which is an event some of you may have attended to in, uh, in person at the school. We're going to do a virtual version of that uh, at 7 on our YouTube channel. So look out for those uh, events. I'm going to put the links to RSVP just to bring you to the event page in the chat. Great. 
Um, just because I, uh, well, could you remind me of that um, mastering service you were plugging earlier? Yeah, here, I'll put it in the chat. Um, yeah. It is Mount Olympia Mastering. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, his name is Adam Hagar. I forget if it's one G or two Gs. Okay. But um, yeah, he's the, he's the real deal and um, pretty reasonably priced as, as those things go. Um, also, if people ever want to make vinyl or stuff like that, like he really knows how to prep, prep, you know, you need special mastering for, to get ready for that kind of thing or just in general, he's, he does great work. All right, then. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Thomas, for facilitating. Definitely. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, yeah. Brent, for providing the feedback. It was great listening to all your tunes. Yep. All yeah. Right. Great job, everyone. All right. We'll all right. Uh, see you all soon, probably virtually. Okay. But it's yeah. good to stay all connected. Right. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.